Hi, I'm Toby. And I'm Nick. And we're here bringing you the Pure Property Podcast with Track Capital, where we talk about everything property and property investment. So today being our first episode, I thought it might be best to introduce ourselves and Track Capital so you can get to know a little bit about us and the company. So Nick, I mean, we'll start with you. Uh, Why don't you let us know why you started and founded the company? Yeah, sure. So back in January 2019, I'd been working for a few years with a couple of different investment firms. And at that stage, I just thought it was the right um, sort of moment, the right timing, just for me to go to market and really bring out my own brand and, and my own company. As I say, by that point, I'd worked for you know multiple different um, property management companies, different developers, different investment firms. I always wanted to start my own business. And um, just given my knowledge at that time, I thought it was the, the sort of right moment for me to bring out a brand which was more... Um, you know, you know, these companies are a bit more sales focused and a bit more aggressive. I wanted to take the opposite approach, you know, still be commercially viable, but ultimately still, you know, being a bit more consultative and, you know, giving value, sharing knowledge and sharing insights and just being being a bit better than everyone else, really. Yeah, I mean, and for myself, I mean, the, the main reason I came on board um, with my property background, I, I really saw uh, sort of track capital and the core values you had and what you wanted to do in the industry um, was very much aligned with what I I believe and what I want to do and that's sort of giving good honest transparent advice and just helping people really like you said not being too hard sales and, and focus on just literally just pushing out numbers it's more mm. consultative um, helping people talking to them because um, there's not one size fits all approach with property investing uh, people have different goals, different aims, um, so they need different strategies and, and different properties. So for me, like I said, I just really, really liked the fact um, for the direction and the core values that, that you had and the company had. And yeah, that's why I, I came on board. Yeah, no, that definitely definitely makes sense. I think it's so important, whatever stage you're at in your in your career and business journey to to work with people you get along with so maybe what would be useful for the guys to know as well is just a bit about um where exactly we've come from so what was your your background what were you doing before you joined track capital yeah so it's a yeah good point it'd be good for them to know so i've had um, a property related background now for just over seven years and it started in a state agency so i started off as an estate agent um really enjoyed it for fell in love with with property it became a passion straight away uh, and I really enjoyed helping people uh, helping people sell their property moving up the ladder down the ladder helping landlords uh, and investors buy property for good returns and I really did enjoy it but then I started to really start focusing and and finding an enjoyment out of the investment and buy to let side because I, I started to deal with quite a few sort of landlords and investors that were selling and buying properties and it really interested me. I love running the numbers, uh, looking at the areas, looking at returns and looking at, at making money <laughs> for other mm. people to be fair. That's mm. um, something I, I enjoy doing and get enjoying them out of. So like they say, um, yeah, if you enjoy it, it's not really work at the end of the day, is it? Yeah, exactly. I think also I think that's like half the battle. You, you've got to make these things win win. So we're lucky enough to be in an industry where our sole purpose is making sure, well, for once, track, sorry, for one, track capital makes money, but also for our investors to make money. Yeah. If they're building up a portfolio, they're doing well, they're doing it safely and securely. Um, ultimately in the long term it means they're going to come back to us they're going to refer their friends etc etc so yeah it just makes for a more uh, profitable journey yeah no i mean i don't know you touched on it at the beginning i mean your, your background you've had a you've had quite a more focused on sort of maybe sort of the investment side of things haven't you if, if i'm correct yeah, so um, obviously I know in your your previous position you're a bit more um, you know, people focused. Mine has been more so. Um, most recently in the past few years, uh, very investment orientated on the on the sales side. So working for two dedicated investment firms, and prior to that it was more the um, property management side. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit more bit more people focused. So that was on the student purpose built student accommodation schemes working for developers and management companies did a bit of block management as well so by the time it actually came to starting track capital not only had i been sort of heavily on the uh, investor side but also on the management side so basically i had an understanding of the the full 360 degree process 
that our potential investors would, would go through. So, yeah, I'm really, um, really glad I got, I got the company started and uh, having that experience to go on is really helpful as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's quite good. I mean, I suppose, like you mentioned, very well rounded. And I suppose that helps when you're talking to investors as well, because you, you've kind of seen it from both sides. And most sides if that makes sense you've seen it on the 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 obviously selling to investors you've also had to deal with developers you've dealt with developments actually working in them and helping them manage them so you you've got quite a good uh, broad understanding and knowledge there which i think's obviously very valuable when when you're talking to investors i think that's that's another thing with with myself uh, I, I I personally invest in property myself, so I've got a couple of properties. So again, I think that helps when I'm talking with investors because I I can share my honest experience. I I, I know I've been there. I, I've I've done it. So when advising clients, I'm sort of advising on how I'd advise myself, if if that makes sense. Which I think, luckily, uh, a lot of investors do appreciate um, because they know I'm sort of being honest and, and giving the advice that I would give to myself. To be yeah, fair. I think once once we get over the first hurdle of people actually having a proper in depth conversation with us, we can really really add value. Obviously, you can tell them about you know your property portfolio, your previous experience, and I can be a bit more sort of analytical and look at the, the sort of due diligence side. So yeah, I know there's a lot we can bring to the table. Yeah, no, definitely. I think um, also uh, mention uh, sort of going back a little bit when you when we talk about why you, why you founded founded the company um obviously you mentioned you saw a gap in the market i think something i definitely realized is obviously being an investor i would register with these investment companies selling um properties like we do yeah and <laughs> some of the phone calls i had Get were hounded literally it was just sell 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 and it was quite harsh it was very in your face and me personally i i didn't take to that i didn't like it and that's that's when I started to think, well, hang on a second, that there must be a gap in the market for an investment firm, which is not doing this, doing the opposite, like you mentioned, and just sort of softly just giving the advice, really, because that's what a lot of investors just want, to be fair. It's the, the advice, the data, the knowledge that you can give them to, to help them make a calculated decision. Yeah, and I think it um, like a lot of it relates to company culture as well. Like you can't blame these these salespeople. They're they're told by the sales managers, they're told by developers to to focus on specific developments. So, in, in essence, it's uh, it can be biased in some cases. That they may not always be giving the correct um, or the most suitable suggestions to investors. So, I'm not saying that's always the case, but it but it can happen. I mean. Our, fundamentally what we do in our in our company is work with different developers in different cities in different asset classes and we try to get a good it doesn't mean we take on lots and lots of properties we do have an in-depth understanding of obviously the schemes we work on but they are quite diverse and they are in different sort of locations and asset classes as i say so yeah hopefully we're in a position to give you know real unbiased advice uh, fundamentally we don't we don't charge any fees we help investors invest intelligently from start to finish at uh, as i say at no extra cost so yeah that's yeah. pretty much sums it up good no no i think that that is good and it gives sort of an understanding of, of what we're about and, and what we're trying to do and i suppose i mean the one question i'll always get asked when i have a have a call of an investor the initial call is well what is it you actually do mm. and i think you're <laughs> probably you're, you're probably better at explaining that um sort of more concisely and briefly um, rather than me w- waffling on to be fair so i mean so nick if how would you how would you describe what we do to an investor in short yeah i mean the most simple way to say it would be that we are a property investment firm or a property investment agency so we effectively market and sell developments for developers so from an investor that looks or the way that would look for an investor is that we speak to them we understand their needs their criteria their long-term objectives how risk averse they are what funds they're working with and plenty of other questions as well and we basically suggest developments to them we guide them through that process of the purchase and the legal side of things we introduce the necessary sort of contacts and the, the people that they need to speak to whether that's lettings management currency exchange company formation so in short we help investors get from start to finish i.e getting income into their bank account yeah. and we help them do it safely and, and free of charge is that is that concise enough for you uh, yeah to be fair i think it is i think i again what i always say to to investors is there's not one size fits all it, it does yeah. depend on the investor themselves so literally like you said 
we we can do it from start to finish. However, that said, uh, it, it's investor dependent. We can do as much or as little as an investor needs. So some yeah. investors, to be fair, they might be very switched on. They might have a portfolio, and they don't want to speak to you. Yeah, they don't. They don't want to speak <laughs> to you. Information. Yeah. but they know the process uh, and they know ha- how to get from A to B. So maybe they mm. just need the initial introduction to certain off-plan, off-market properties, which we can help with. Then you've got the other investor. They might just be starting out. It might be their first investment. So again, it's um, to use the term, a lot more hand-holding is needed. Yeah, babysitting. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> no, I wouldn't say babysitting. That may be a bit, bit of stretch too far. But no, you're correct. Yeah, it's it's sort of overseeing the whole process for them because it is quite new to them. It is quite daunting. Um, and if you don't know what you do and you don't know the process, it, it, it can actually jeopardize a purchase. So it can cost you money in the, in the long run. Um, but it, it can delay the process as well so we can help like you said with as much or as little as needed yeah and it's um it is a fair point because if you look at sort of our website and even other um investment agencies websites as well you can go on those websites and you can get overwhelmed with the amount of opportunities there are out there what developers to work with what location to go for how much to spend etc so as long as you're asking the right questions uh, I mean we do get people sometimes that uh, you know they say oh, I'm only an amateur investor or I'm only starting out it's I'd probably say fi- maybe 40 to 50 percent of our inquiries are from people starting their journey and, and the remainder from maybe more sophisticated or experienced investors right up to um, to funds from the, the likes of the Middle East and Far East, etc., that are looking to, to enter the UK market. So it is a large sort of range of investors. So my advice or my suggestion to anyone would be if you're dealing with us or dealing with other companies, just always make sure you ask the questions, you get the full information. There should be no reason why another sort of consultant shouldn't be able to provide that for you. Yeah, no, you're right there. And I think what I'd also advise I'd give uh, if talking to ourselves or other investment companies is always try and be as transparent, honest with them as possible. Because the more information you give them as well, uh, the better suited they are to to offer you correct investments and correct developments. Um, So just giving as much information about your criteria, your budget, all this stuff at the beginning will, again, it will sort of help cut down the time of them sending you good properties and good investments um i definitely find that myself if i just obviously you ask the the, the questions but if some people could be cagey which some people are because they don't want to give too much away i i get that but it can sometimes lead to frustration in both parties and both sides because we can end up sending stuff that isn't really relevant or isn't going to be good for them so i think on that point of view the more information that you you give us the, the better advice we can give you in in all honesty yeah, and I think that's um, what we try to do um, as a company in terms of the providing that advice. We try to go a bit further than other companies may do. So, for example, as you know, Toby, every new development that we put out, I do a full video explanation, yeah. you know, a screen record, screen record speak through of, um, you know, the, the costs, the fees, the process, the timeframes, the units available, the location. So 99% of questions will be answered from that video and they get that in the first email. You know, times are, it sounds, you know, a really old fashioned thing to say, but times are changing. Yeah. Uh, people, It's not like people want to speak for 30 minutes on the phone these days. They want the information on the demand yeah. and they want it quickly. And I think it's something me and you try and enforce on the, on the guys on the doing the sales for our team. Um, you know, get the information sent to people quickly, concisely, and make sure they've got all the details to make an informed decision. I think this podcast as well is really going to help with that process. So once we're um, able to educate investors, you know, build trust, show our market knowledge, um, that's really, really going to help. So, I mean, from your side, what do you, what would you see as the sort of the purpose of the podcast and how, how is this going to help our investors? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be the next Joe Rogan, basically. (laughs) We'll see about that. Yeah, that that's my purpose of the podcast. I'll start getting some celebrities on here. You know, we'll we'll be flat now. Spotify. (laughs) Yeah. No, in all fairness, the 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 purpose in the podcast is it's literally just to sort of help educate um, the listeners, uh, investors, and just general property insight uh, from our point of view as well. Because I think that's something we don't always get across when we're talking to an investor on the phone. 
they're very busy. They don't want to sit on the phone and and find out what you've been doing during the day or what you've found out specifically about a certain area development mm. and what you've what you've been going through, what's going on in the industry. It's not really what they're looking for unless they ask those questions or it is of interest. So I think from our point of view, it's going to be a good insight into the industry uh, and the market, the property market in general, what we do, and we can help hopefully add value to the listeners to sort of give them a bit of educational stuff and like I said the insight um, is going to be very valuable as well yeah and I think that's um, when it comes to researching property and, and educating yourself there's a thousand property courses out there in the UK and hundreds of different strategies you know HMOs uh, service to accommodation PBSA i.e purpose-built student accommodation rent to rent you know there's plenty yeah. of things you can do and what we cover, as you, as you well know, is more the new build investment side, off-plan property purchases, and really going for those quality city centre apartments that really appreciate in value. Yeah. You know, this is where you see the, the, the smart money coming into the country. So, you know, where do pension funds invest? Where do institutional funds put their money? They put it yeah. into city centre apartments. So that's one of our sort of key areas of focus. And we want to be the best at giving out information on this area. And that's that's sort of my uh, my sort of aim for the podcast, as well as signing you know multi million pound uh, Spotify deals. <laughs> yeah, that that will uh, that will come uh, that will come quite uh, shortly. Um, well, look, I, I think I'm hoping we we've, we've covered quite a bit about ourselves uh, individually and, and Track Capital as a company. I mean, hopefully that's given the listeners an insight in, into us. Um, obviously, if they do want to discuss more, if they have any questions, obviously they can get in contact. We're on. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, obviously email info at trackcapital.co.uk. Um, we're, we're always open to having discussions. I know me especially, I can talk property for days and people probably get bored of me <laughs> talking property. Um, so yeah, we're always there. But I think we can uh, we can wrap that up here. And um, yeah, so next week, I suppose, what we're going to be talking about, which is quite an interesting topic, especially at the moment and something that's in, in the news quite a bit, is the stamp duty holiday. Uh, and also, we'll uh, give a little bit of an insight into sort of the general market conditions at the moment and how we're seeing things, especially as we've had uh, the coronavirus now for quite some time. Um, it's obviously settled, so we've we've got an idea on what the market's doing and, and what might happen going forward. Yeah, and I think, you know, being on the, the front lines, working in the market gives us obviously a good perception, but also we're speaking to investors all around the world. So it's really interesting to see you know, what a Middle East investor thinks of the UK or, or, you know, what the guys in Hong Kong are thinking about the UK at the moment. So because our database and our, our network of investors, I hate the phrase database, but our yeah. network of investors is so diverse. Hopefully we can give, you know, a snapshot, a summary and give you guys a really good picture of what's what's happening in the UK market. Well, yeah, I suppose. So definitely, definitely join in for the next episode where we'll be talking about the stamp duty holiday and the general property market conditions. Um, That's all from us. I'm Toby. And I'm Nick. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.